see this email here? What's this here? Which document is this, Council? Is this 55 oh, back no. when we started? I think so. Once I hit the shift button, I kind of, it's hard to figure out. That sounds right. Okay. You see this document? Yes. Okay. June 21st, 2020, right? Uh -huh. Okay. And this is you saying uh, to Mr. Hughes that you're going to go speak with him today about his concerns. You see that? Yep. Okay. And these concerns, what are these concerns? It's in the email about him being being bullied. Okay. And he says, I'm addressing this issue to all because somehow when I report these issues, issues to management, it gets ignored or it backfires in my face. And that was in the exclamation point. You see that there? Yes, I do. Okay. So let's talk about back, things backfiring in his face. Um, do you recall Mr. Lucky filing a complaint uh, and then being... Uh, given an insubordination um, uh, charge. Objection, vague. Can you narrow the time zone, the time period? Uh, I mean, first, I'd like to know whether he knows about one, and then we can narrow. We can ask him about the time period. But is there, do you know, have him being charged uh, in with insubordination in response to more than one complaint? I believe so. Okay. Can you identify when those took place? I I don't recall, but I believe he has a couple of insubordination cases. Okay. And those are, again, in response to or arising out of him filing uh, original complaints against uh, some member of the department, right? That I don't know. If it was rise from that or what, I don't know what it arise from. Okay. Well, so that's my question is, in response to, did you ever learn about in your capacity as union president, Mr. Lucky filing a complaint, and then no, so as a result, let's make it let's make it easy. Tell me what, the, give me to the point. Get to the point, and let me know what you want, and I can explain it to you. Instead of going beating around a bush and all this other stuff. Hmm. Okay. Well. Yeah, so, for example. Do you recall Mr. Lucky getting his law enforcement powers taken away after he filed the complaint? He got his, his he got his law enforcement powers taken away uh, for fitness for duty because they for thought what? he would they, they took it they took his 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 arrest powers away for a fitness duty a fitness for duty complaint because he was all over the place. During an internal investiga uh, affairs investigation? During, during an internal affairs investigation because of a statement that he made. Okay. Which so he that, probably that should be, have got terminated agree, for, but he didn't. You'll agree with me that that's an example of a situation in which he filed a complaint, and then as a result of that, he suffered an adverse consequence, right? He, he, made, a, he made a statement in his interview mm -hmm. That was, in my opinion, probably should have got him fired, but they didn't. Okay. They just took his badge away from him, which prevented him from doing his job, fitness right? Fitness for duty, correct. They okay. had a fitness for duty for him. They took his badge and gun away and his arrest powers away because of a statement that he had made in his interview, during his interview. And then they had him go get a psyche valve. Okay. And so what about when he filed a complaint against you? When right? he got, what he, he was already pending termination. So. Okay. Well, leaving that aside for a moment. Uh, and again, he wasn't pending termination until 9 14 of 2021 right look i i don't know counsel I, I really don't know i don't have any of the documents in front of me 
If I had any okay. of those documents in front of me, I would go to the documents, look it up, and agree with you. But since I don't, I can't agree with you because I don't know. Right. So um, keeping that in mind, then my question is, um, he filed a complaint against you, and then okay. as a result, you said he's recording me, and then they started investigating him for recording you, right? Nope. When he gave the information to Internal Affairs, when he gave the information to Internal Affairs, and he said he had the recording, then they put out a record. They then they said, "Oh, he violated another rules violation." So they did yeah. that. Well, I understood your testimony to be that you heard this from somebody else and that you told from somebody else. And then I told Smoot and then he he didn't take my word for it because it was hearsay. I'm gonna say he didn't take my word for it, but I made a mention of it. I said he violated the policy, he's recorded me from what I found out. And then when when he presented the information to be factual, then he got another IA case. So yes. Okay. So when he had this other internal affairs case and when he was getting his fitness for duty, and when he made the comment, they took his weapon and arrest powers and stuff away. Okay. And what about, did he get written up uh, by Bowers, Byers, do you know? For for what? For what instance? Anything. Huh? Did Byers write Deputy Lucky up based on your knowledge? Oh, my knowledge? I believe so, but I'm not 100%. Okay. How about Sawchuck? That I don't know, because some of this okay. stuff could be when you say written up. Are you talking about it's going in front of internal affairs or something in staff management or IA? Not IA, but a what do you call it? Uh, an EAD employee employee I get it. documentation form so or whatever. I, I mean, let's when you say write up. That's, that's very vague. I got it. So let's give me one pause here, and I'll get the correct order of things. Uh, so we're not dancing around like this Thank and we'll get that straight now. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thanks for that. I think I cleared everything up here. So um Sawchuck, that's the supervisor who's doing scheduling uh that Mr. Lucky's complains about um the zones issue, right? I guess so, yes. Yeah, okay. And then you and him, uh, you and Mr. Lucky made a complaint higher up about that, right? Yes. And then he was written up by Sawchuck, right? I guess so, yes. Okay. And then Byers, uh, he makes a complaint about her. Do you recall that? I think so, yeah. What was that complaint? I said, I think so. I don't, I don't, he made, he, I know it was one time. He called me after me working an absurd amount of overtime at five blanking 30 in the morning. And I just got off okay. work at two o'clock in the morning. And the first thing I hear on the phone is buyers, buyers. First question I asked him, cause he has this little chuckle or little smirk laugh that he does. You know what it is counsel. Cause you have, you, you got the smirk on your face. So he called me at that time in the morning and he's saying buyers, buyers, buyers. I'm like, oh shit. Is I'm being honest. Oh shit! What? Something happened to Byers? No. Something happened to you? No. What's going on? She slammed the door in my face. Are you? And excuse my language. Are you fucking kidding me? You calling me this time in the morning for that? And I just went to sleep. Talk to me later about it. Right. When I talked to him later about it, which was like four or five hours, a, a couple of hours later, I spoke with him about it, and he tells me. She swung a door and almost hit him with a door. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay. And and I don't want to belittle COVID. your work because I do understand that it's significant and you're working an extreme amount of hours. But I just like you to explain to me why that why you felt that call was inappropriate. Oh, somebody swinging open a door? Council and I just worked, I think I worked almost a 17 hour day. And you get a phone call like that and you hear buyers, 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 and you're half sleep. The first thing okay. I ask, is she okay? I'm thinking that she got hit or something. 
or she got shot. No. And then he, and then he's, I'm like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. She almost hit me with a door. Are you kidding me, man? I, I'm, I know I'm, I know, I know I'm Fred Gladney. I know I was a sergeant. I know I was a union president. I know I work a lot of hours, but I'm human and I do need to get sleep. And that phone call at 5.30, quarter to six in the morning or six o'clock in the morning is inappropriate. That, that type of phone call is inappropriate, especially if you yelling. My wife is like, oh, she, my, it wakes my wife up. And she's thinking something tragic happened. Yes, that's inappropriate. Okay. That's, that's no, I get it. Because that's, I mean, what you're saying is it's a law enforcement context, right? Yeah. And at that type of time in the morning, then my wife wakes up, she's thinking something tragic happened, and it's a complaint about a door. A door. I'm going okay. to do, say, like Alan Iverson, this is practice. We're talking about practice here. If you basketball fans, y'all would get it, but I guess not. Yeah. Well, I what my point is is that, or my question, I guess, is if um, because there there could be certain employment context where one employee slamming a door on another employee is is a significant event, right? I guess it was during a COVID deal, and it, and I'm like, oh my god, and I talked to her about it, and she was like, yeah, glad I opened up the door, and I just flung the door open. I didn't mean to hit anybody, didn't hit anybody or anything like that. And he demanded to look at some schedule or something. It, it turned into a mess. And she was like, no, not at the time. And they got into this heated debate. And then all of a sudden, she told him to go to work. And he refused to go to work. And then she wrote him up. For his okay. That's the long story short. I appreciate that. But so just so I can be clear, it's fair to say that he uh, raises an issue about uh, Ms. Byers. And then she writes him up for insubordination, right? Correct. Okay. And then there's another incident, uh, and I'm a little confused on when this takes place, uh, but uh, the the thrust of which is that while Mr. Lucky is in the academy, I believe that uh, people are, and I think the quote is, picking jokes on him and putting a deadbeat uh, in his, uh, uh, you know, on him. Did you learn about that? I heard he told me about it, but I thought it was on his water bottle. Not on him, but on his water bottle. Okay. And did he tell you that he was allergic to bees? No, he never told me that until maybe before this August incident. Okay. And then um, later, there's a, a final incident. And there, I, they don't want to see final. There's another incident in which there's Barbie dolls uh, that are being placed in uh, his mailbox. Is that right? Okay. Now, the Barbie doll incident, I was even a part of that joke. And I mean that the joke was placed on me as well. Um, and that Barbie doll, from my regulation of it, the doll was outside by the squad. Um, and then one of the jokes that was even played on me, the joke was, Vlad, there's a young lady out there waiting for you, and she's naked. I'm like, what? He had a little dial by the, by the squad. I'm like, okay, all right, good joke, la, 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 and move on. That dial made its way inside the uh, patrol division. Uh -huh. That dial was in everybody's mailbox. So one person grabbed it, put in another person. Whoever brought it in, put it into a mailbox, and then it went into everybody's mailbox. Then that, well, that same dial that the photo was taken and all this other stuff ended up on the sergeant's desk, right? And it's a ratted little little plastic little Barbie doll, ratted little pl Barbie doll that was placed in his mailbox. He took a picture of it. Then somebody must have seen it, took it out of his mailbox, took it and put it on a sergeant's desk and not trying to be vulgar, but put a flower in between the doll's leg and it sat on the sergeant's desk for a minimum two weeks. And people were making jokes with the sergeant about the about the dial. It's sick humor that we do, but I don't think it was a malicious act. Um, he thought it was a malicious act. Um, 
but it was that dial was in his locker in his mailbox. Like I said, I was even a part of that same joke, so to speak, as well as another supervisor. And, and is believe, that the end? Excuse me. And then I believe at the end, I think uh, Captain Avanti was the uh, he was the commander of the patrol division, and he said, "Do you know anything about this dial incident with Lucky?" I believe. Um, and then I said, what's dial? Some dial, he showed me a picture. I believe he showed me a picture or talked about the dial. I said, oh, this dial is on Sergeant. You know, I'm not going to say his name, but that Sergeant's desk. He said, yep, I guess that's the dial. And took the dial and then whatever happened with the dial after that, I don't know. Okay. And just for everybody's clarity, that doll was, it's a white doll, right? It's a Caucasian doll. Yeah, it's a plastic, it's a Barbie doll, a white Barbie doll with brown hair or whatever it's called. Right, but I'm sure all the Barbie fans out there will know that there's uh, multi ethnicities of Barbies, right? Yeah, that, like I said, that that same doll was in the parking lot by the squad, you know, and it was I seen it one day and I looked at it and kept it moving. Okay, and is that the complaint that led to Mr. Lucky uh, getting his law as law enforcement officer powers taken away, fitness for duty? Is that that same investigation? That I'm not for sure is possibility because okay. we went to we went to internal affairs a bunch of times, and who was the investigator? I'm not going to let you know if that's for sure. Who investigated that? Uh, if I told you that it was Mr. Stiff, would that uh, okay? If that was the one with Stiff, if that was the one with Stiff. Um, that's when Lucky made uh, inappropriate statement. And then when he was doing his interview, he was, when I say all over the place, he was literally all over the place, um, which drew concerns. Um, you know, during that interview, he has highs, lows. Um, he was, you know, he talked about in being in grade school to working at a Walmart, and then he was doing this, and do, he was this, there was no consistency, there was no, chronological order of anything. And then once he got um, walked off or got his arrest powers taken away, then after that, I said, dude, you're all over the place. You need to put this, you know, they put him in front of a, uh, had him going to psyche valve. And I said, dude, the only way you're gonna get your job back, you can't be all over the place. And what I told him was put it in chronological order from, the the first thing all the way down to the last. And that's exactly what he did. Then he had a psyche vow, passed the psyche vow, and was got back to work and was given his arrest powers back. Okay. And during, his, during his interview, he made an inappropriate statement, which drew concerns. And I thought at that particular time when he made that particular statement, they was gonna try to terminate him at that time, but they did it. And then okay. I made some, then I made, I saved his job, but I made a comment at the end. And then when I made that comment, they backed off for several months or so. And there we go. Okay. So, um, so that's four for four anyways, right? Not oh for four, but four for four where, uh, he makes a complaint and then almost immediately afterwards, uh, there's something bad happening, right? It, 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 yes. Some did bad. I got it. All right. So then, uh, keeping that in mind, um, well, and it's, I guess it's five for, uh, five because of the, uh, recording, right? So we've got Sawchuck Byers, uh, the Barbie doll. It's probably, uh, okay. probably Byers in there. It's probably another yeah. buyer in there. I got, okay, that's probably why. That makes sense. Um, okay. So, and you'll agree with me that part of the, um, that an employee can be, for lack of a better word, a complainer, but the sheriff's department is still required to respond to their complaints, right? Correct. Okay. And do you know if the sheriff's department has an anti-retaliation provision? Yes. 
Okay. Do you believe that the sheriff's department follows that anti-retaliation provision? In my personal thing, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Okay. How about any other times? Do you know them to have retaliated against anybody else? In the eye of the person who feels that they're getting retaliated against? Yes. Okay. But you've got a pretty good view being the union president for such a long period of time, right? I was a union president for about six years. Okay. And did you always feel with you when you were the union president that the person who thought they were being retaliated against, that it was just in their mind or something else? Sometimes I thought it was in their mind and sometimes it looked like, wow, it was just blatant retaliation. Okay.